6 ways to get more power out of your Stirling engine. Number 1. Maximize the temperature difference. Since the Stirling engine depends on the temperature difference to operate, for the gas to maximum change in volume, the temperature difference needs to be as large as possible. This means keeping the cold side as cold as possible and the hot side as hot as possible. Many Stirling engines use air cooling. The metal fins radiate heat to the air. This is a simple design and it works, but after running for a while the metal warms up and the power drops because of the temperature difference getting smaller. A better option is water cooling. Water has a much higher heat capacity and stays cool for much longer. For even better efficiency the water can be pumped around. For the hot side, the hotter the better. Instead of using a candle, try an alcohol burner or a propane torch. Insulating the hot side also keeps the heat in. A closed combustion chamber instead of an open flame keeps the heat trapped and increases efficiency. The fresh air comes in from underneath, the combustion gases exit at the top but the heat is kept inside. Number 2. Minimize the dead space or dead volume. The dead volume is the volume of air that is left at compression. In other words, the volume that is left above the displacer when it's at the top. This should be as small as possible. In Yama type engines, the dead volume is significantly larger because of the connection. To improve this, the connection tube should be as short as possible. The height of the power cylinder should be as low as possible. Number 3. Add regeneration. A regenerator can trap some of the heat and release it back on the next stroke. This improves efficiency and overall power. This can easily be done by making the displacer out of steel wool instead of a solid material. The steel wool has a lot of surface area to temporarily store heat which is reused in the next stroke. Number 4. Minimize losses. Losses everywhere in the engine make the performance and efficiency drop. Make sure the seal at the displacer doesn't leak too much air. Lubrication is also very important. Lubricate the displacer rod with some Vaseline or other thick lubricant. It will lubricate the rod but also create an air seal. Don't use thin oil, it will be too thin and can make a dangerous situation inside the cylinder. The oil vapors can combust and potentially damage the engine or cause injuries to people standing close to it. Number 5. Roughen the contact areas. Take some sandpaper and sand down the inside of the displacer cylinder on the cold and hot side. The rough surface will have more contact surface and therefore the air will have more contact with the hot and cold sides. The air will heat and cool faster. Number 6. Optimize phase angle. This is an optional one and is different for each engine. It depends on the purpose of the engine. Air takes time to heat up and cool down. The 90 degree phase shift between displacer and power piston or diaphragm provides this time. But when you have a fast running engine that is supposed to run at very high RPMs, the phase angle can be optimized to more than 90 degrees. This gives the air slightly more time to warm up and cool down. This can result in more power at high speeds. In the same way for a slow running engine, for example under high load, the phase angle can be decreased to less than 90 degrees. At low RPMs the air will be heated and cooled before the displacer is at the top. This can counteract on the crankshaft and reduce power. By decreasing the phase angle the air will have less time to warm up and cool down, resulting in a smoother rotation and more power. All of these tips should help to get some extra power out of your Stirling engine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave questions and comments below. Thanks for watching.